guys. So for my birthday this year, I had a couple of awesome Thai friends come up with a three course dinner for me that included, you know, your hors d'oeuvres, your entrees, and then um, your dessert. And on one of the desserts, it's actually called Bua Loi, and it is these um, colorful, glutinous rice balls in a pool of coconut milk and pandan leaves. And the cool thing about the glutinous rice balls is they were all different colors, but they were all naturally flavored. And my friends had pandan, pumpkin, and taro, which are all really traditional flavors to kind of color all of those balls. And today for you guys, I'm going to be using pandan as well, as sweet potatoes, and then also beets to make it nice and red and pink. So um, you guys are gonna really enjoy this recipe, so I can't wait to show you guys. So let's head over to the kitchen and then let's get started. Alrighty guys, so these are frozen pandan leaves and pandan is like my favorite 2016 flavor find. It's kind of like milky, grassy, sweet. I said the Southeast Asians kind of use it as their like base vanilla flavor instead. So I took about 10 leaves and a couple tablespoons of water. The hard part about using so little water is your blender might not start blending so I might have added a little bit more water. But then afterwards you get it super fine and then you put it through a sieve and then you squish all of the liquid out, okay? And now time for the glutinous rice flour. So this is glutinous rice and not just rice flour, okay? Completely different. I put in about a half a cup along with about three to four tablespoons of pandan liquid. Um, when you're making a dough with glutinous rice, a lot of it is really by feel and you wanna just stir it around. Sometimes you might need more flour, sometimes you might need more of the liquid. But um, what's cool about it is as you start kneading it with your hands, you'll start getting it to the consistency of Play-Doh where it no longer sticks to your hands. So something like that. And that's what's really cool about um, rice flour based doughs, okay? So you can kind of do that with it. Now, instead of just picking and pinching off little pieces of dough and then rolling it in, a really quick way to do this is to just roll it into a log. And I mean, you're not really looking for anything too, too exact, but just keep the size of the balls about the same so that when you cook it, everything cooks at um, about the same time. So instead of juice, I wanted to show you one with a mash like vegetable or fruit. My friend did it with taro and pumpkin and then this is actually sweet potato. So it's like one small sweet potato that I mashed up and the ratios are similar. I think that this might have needed just a tad more of the rice flour but you're really looking for the same thing when the dough stops sticking to your hand. I will say that if you're using a mashed vegetable or probably like pureed fruit, the, the mixture does come a little bit stickier but um, it's cool because once you cook it, the texture is a lot softer in the ones with like mashed pumpkin or mashed potatoes in it and then the ones with like the liquid like the pandan liquid comes off a little bit more chewy so same thing with this um, you can see that the dough's texture is um, just a little bit softer and it's it's a tad more sticky but it really doesn't stick to your hands so you know, just kind of roll it keep it the same size and then we'll do the same thing so the top one I actually did with beet juice. I had a little bit of beet powder and then I mixed that together and um, they come off nice and beautiful and red. So these are so colorful, I love them so much. Um, at this stage, you can actually put them into the freezer and then you can, you know, once they're frozen, you can just wait until whatever day you want and then you can start cooking it then. Anyway, so I did end up freezing mine just to show you guys. And what you wanna do is you want to put it in a bowl of boiling water and then probably like lower it down to a simmer. And then after a couple of minutes, they'll just start floating up and the color actually becomes a lot more intense. And then you can strain it out and then put it probably in like a bowl of water so that they don't stick together. Now we're making the coconut milk that um, all of the glutinous balls will be in afterwards. So this is about a cup of coconut milk. I put in a couple leaves of pandan. Depending on how sweet you like, I put in about a quarter cup of sugar because I like that it's just ever so slightly sweet and I can still taste the coconut flavor, but you can definitely put um, a little bit more. And then I was just trying to get the balls to float up on top so that they would photograph nicely. What I love about these is that not only are they so, so colorful, but they're naturally colored and they also have the flavor of whatever, you know, fruit or vegetable you put them in, which I think is all the more important. Anyways, there you guys have it, Bois Loi. I think that you guys will love making it. It is so, so fun, especially if you make it with kids as well. And um, all of these flavors go so, so well with the coconut milk base. I mean, I could just drink it up and just, you know, you can serve it hot or you can serve it cold as well. As usual, if you guys wanna see more recipes like this, and who wouldn't, remember to hit that like and subscribe button. And I will see you guys again next time. Bye.